Hey folks and welcome to another video. Today's video is basically going to be asking the question how does core and thread count actually affect games? Now this is something that I've been quite interested to find out for a little while now. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the Core i5-4590 that's in my gaming rig and systematically going into the motherboard BIOS and disabling the cores. And with each of these four setups, one core, two core, three core and four core, we're going to run through a predetermined set of benchmarks consisting of Tomb Raider 2013, that's in-game benchmark, to represent an older game, Metro Last Light Redux's in-game benchmark, which is representative of a new-ish AAA title, and finally we're going to play through some chapters in Battlefield 1 single player campaign. So let's get into the benchmarks. The first one that we're on was Tomb Raider 2013, and surprisingly for me even, the only time the performance actually dipped was when we was running one core and one thread, and on this test we've seen an average of 110 FPS. On 2 core, 3 core and 4 core, the result was exactly the same, at 117 FPS. Next up was the slightly newer Metro Last Light Redux, and in this benchmark we started to see the core counts starting to skew those FPS results. On a single core, we averaged 33 FPS, although it should be noted that there was so much pop in it looked absolutely terrible. Moving up to two cores, we averaged 56 FPS. Now, this is kind of in the ballpark figure of where I would be getting with four cores. But again, the performance, it just wasn't all there. There was a few little bits of pop in and it just did not run smoothly with quite a lot of frame time spikes. Moving up to three cores, it's seen the average FPS head above 60. And likewise with the four core, we've seen it hovering at 62. Now the three core and the four core results, that could really be down to the margin of error. And if I didn't know how many cores it was actually running, I would have been hard pressed to tell the difference. Finally, somehow I managed to get Battlefield 1 to run on a single core. The results were absolutely terrible. The resolution was still at 1080p but the settings had to be dialed back and we eventually got the game to boot and play through a single player mission at 12 FPS on average. It obviously dipped well into the single digits and it never really got above 15 or 16 FPS. To keep things fair for the rest of the tests, we run all the benchmarks at exactly the same settings. When using two cores, we've seen that 12 FPS average jump up to 37, although it wasn't exactly what you'd call smooth. The real difference came when we enabled that third core, so on three cores and three threads, we averaged 83 FPS, and we even seen highs up into the mid-90s. Interestingly enough, when we enabled that fourth core, the average frame rate didn't take a huge jump again, it averaged at 88, although the maximum frame rate we've seen, it was up to about 125 instead of the 95, so we gained about 30 FPS at the maximum range. Again, just like with Metro Last Light, there was no real difference when playing between the three core and the four core setup. And while this test it might be pretty pointless, what it does highlight is that that four cores, it just seems to be that sweet spot in gaming at the moment. The very fact that in Battlefield 1, going from two cores up to four cores, it more than doubled the frame rate. It just shows you how the developers are choosing to optimise their games. Now this could be down to consoles like the PS4 and Xbox One running eight core CPUs, or it could be the fact that a Core i5 CPU, it just hits that sweet spot when it comes to price to performance. And it works so well on a whole multitude of applications, it's not just limited to gaming that this chip performs. So thanks folks for staying with me on this totally random video. If you liked it you can use those thumbs and you can hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below if you've not done so. Stay tuned for some more GPU tests coming up in the next few days, and I hope to see you all again next time.